J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Kenny Baker, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens the program with Go South, young man. <laughs> There's a popular song out now called April in My Heart, and that gives me an idea. April, with its fresh springtime colors, is a long way off, but you can get a touch of spring into your menu tomorrow. Just serve Jell-O for dessert, for Jell-O's six glowing colors are so bright and cheerful, so fresh and gay they perk up any meal. And those six delicious flavors bring you extra rich fruit goodness. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime, everyone is crammed with extra fruit richness. A depth of flavor that rivals the fresh ripe fruits themselves. No matter how you serve it, dressed up or perfectly plain, Jell-O is a grand dessert. Tempting and good with extra rich flavor, bright and gay with springtime color. So ask your grocer tomorrow for America's favorite gelatin dessert, Jell-O. Go South, young man, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we turn back the clock and take you to the drugstore across the street from the NBC building here in Hollywood. The time is exactly 15 minutes before this broadcast. Take it away, drugstore. You'll have to hurry, Mary. We haven't got much time. Well, I'm hungry. Look, if you'll wait till after the broadcast, I'll take you out and buy you a full-course dinner. I'm no gambler. I'll take a sandwich now. All right, it's up to you. Say, uh, here's a couple of seats here. <laughs> Whoop! Madam, would you mind taking your peak and knees off this seat? These stools are for customers. Well, Cuddles is having a hot fudge Sunday. Oh, he is. That's all his face needs, some hot fudge on it. <laughs> Stop arguing, Jack. Here's a couple of seats over here. Okay. Hmm, Cuddles, yes. <laughs> oh, hello there Hello, Mary, what'll it be today? Oh, just a sandwich I'll have a peanut butter, jelly, olive, nut, bacon, cheese, roast beef, and turkey on whole wheat Wow <laughs> Oh, Gilroy Yes, Radcliffe Hit the jackpot on whole wheat <laughs> You want something else, Mary? No, that'll be all Okay, what do your father have? I'll have... I'm not her father <laughs> I'm Jack Benny now, let's see. I think I'll take the businessman's lunch. Are you a businessman? No. Then you can't have it. <laughs> now, wait a minute, young man. I ordered the businessman's lunch, <laughs> and I'm going to get it out. Oh, Cuddles, did you bite that man's ankle? Ankle nothing and take him off that stool. Fine, fine peak of knees. Well, I bought him at a sale. A sale? Yes, he was marked down from a great dame. <laughs> well, that's very interesting. All right, mister, what do you have? Oh, I'm not in the mood to eat now. Uh, just bring me a cup of coffee. Oh, here's something good, Jack. A Dunker Special. A Dunker Special? What's that? A uh, coffee, donuts, and rubber gloves, 15 cents. <laughs> well, that's very sanitary, but not for me. Oh, I know what, uh... I'll have a chocolate malted milk. A chocolate malted milk? Yes, and uh, put an egg in it. Fried or scrambled? <laughs> Look, I want a malted milk with just a plain raw egg in it. A raw egg. Okay. Oh, Gilroy. Yes, Radcliffe. One malted milk for a barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> what a smart aleck. Now, pardon me. I'd like two aspirin tablets and a glass of water. Yes, sir. Here you are. Hmm. This face is familiar. Here's your sandwich, Mary. A five-decker. Oh, boy, isn't that something? Yeah, it looks like Grauman's Chinese with potato chips. <laughs> That's right, it's even got footprints in the mayonnaise. Oh, you're just making that up. Here's your malted milk, Groucho. 
Hey, wait a minute, you. I ordered a malted milk, and this is an ice cream soda. That's not ice cream, that's an egg. Well, the least you could do is take it out of the shell. <laughs> you clumsy dope, can't you break an egg? If I could break an egg, I'd punch you right in the nose. <laughs> oh, you would? Say, Redcliffe, is that man annoying you? No, Gilroy, put down that cupcake. <laughs> That's a fine way to treat customers, I must say. Oh, fine. Jack, look. Cuddles, I'll give you just ten. Cuddles, I'll give you just ten to let go of my garden. One, two, three. Ooh, my leg. <laughs> Darn it, he ruined a perfectly good pair of garters. Go on, you've had new elastic put in them twelve times. <laughs> Well, the metal isn't the least bit rusty. <laughs> Gee, I don't want this more than milk now. Well, why don't you order something else, Jack? Yeah. Say, buddy, what's that lady having over there with the ice cream, pineapple, whipped cream, and marshmallow and the cherry on top? Where? Right over there. That's her husband. <laughs> oh. Odd looking, isn't he? I'll tell you what, uh, just bring me a cup of coffee. Coffee? Yes. Sanka, panka, or schmanka? <laughs> Look, just bring me a cup of coffee <laughs> with no ad lib. Now, pardon me. I'd like two more aspirin tablets and a glass of water. Yes, sir. Here you are. You know, Mary, I've seen that guy someplace. Oh, hello, Kenny. Hiya, Jack. I gotta grab something to eat quick. My girl's waiting outside. Your girl's waiting outside? Why don't you bring her in? She's watching my bicycle. Oh. <laughs> Gee whiz, can't you put a lock on the bicycle? No, I trust her. <laughs> Well, that's mighty sweet of you. Hiya, Kenny. What'll it be? Oh, let's see. Uh, give me a tuna fish sandwich on rye bread. Okay. No butter, no lettuce, no mayonnaise. Oh, Gilroy. Yes, Radcliffe. One tuna on rye. No brush, no lather, no rub in. <laughs> now, now that's just showing off. <laughs> oh, say, Radcliffe. I want a side order of coleslaw with that. Just a minute. Hey, Gil. Yes, Brad. <laughs> Have we got any coleslaw? Oh, just scads of it. <laughs> well, that's entrancing. <laughs> oh, Jack, there's a scale over there. I think I'll go over and weigh myself. Okay. Oh, wait a minute, Mary. I'll go with you. Don't eat my sandwich, Jack. I won't. Say, I wonder what time it is, anyway. <laughs> oh, go away, you little runt. Scat. Come here, Cuddles. He's just jealous because you've got hair. <laughs> Listen, lady, if you think that I... Oh, hello, Don. Why, Jack, I didn't see you. Have I got time to eat? Yeah, but hurry up, Don. We go on the air in a few minutes, you know. Well, let's see, Mr. Wilson. Well, I'd like a glass of milk and a large dish of jello. What flavor? Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, or lime? Mix them up with sliced bananas. Don, get two spoons with that. I'll race you to the middle. <laughs> Last one there has to pay for it. Uh, pardon me. I'd like two more aspirin tablets and a glass of water. Yes, sir. <laughs> Hmm. That's six aspirin tablets. Say, mister, have you got a headache? No, but don't tell the clerk. He'll think I'm nuts. So <laughs> low. Oh, now I know who he is. That guy's crazier than my Aunt Minnie's quilt. <laughs> Say, Jack, if we don't want to be late, we better be getting over to the studio. Yeah, we're out in a few minutes there. Oh, Jack, I just got on the scales, and how much do you think I weigh? How much? A hundred and three pounds. Boy, have I been put on weight. You been what? <laughs> I said I've been putting on weight. Boy, have I been put on in weight. A hundred. Listen. A hundred and three pounds and you put on weight. Yeah, I only weighed seven when I was born. Well, you better watch yourself. And you know what else, Jack? Uh, Kenny got one of those little cards with a fortune on it. Oh, he did? What does it say? Uh, here it is. It says that you are shrewd, clever, and intelligent until you open your mouth. That's me. <laughs> you said it. Say, Don. Hey, Don, what's your weight anyway? Oh, I really don't know, Jack. Well, come on. Here's a good chance to find out. Oh, no. Nothing to it. Oh, come on, Don. Here. Come here. I've got a penny. You better put in a nickel. Here we are. Now, get on the scale. Oh, this silly. Silly nothing. Now, stand still. Well, all right. Here, Kenny, hold my hat. Okay. A lot of difference that'll make. Now, hold still, Don. Wow, look at that. 100? 150? 175? 200? 250? God! 300? Three... Oh, 
my goodness, he brought the seal. Oh, Kenny, help me pick up John. Okay. Oh, hey, Jack, John's watch just came out of the scale. What does it say? Yes, you better run. Here comes the manager. That's a good idea. Let's get out of here. Oh, Gilroy. Yes, Redcliffe. Turn on the radio. It's time for the Jell-O program. Come along, Cuddles. <laughs> Played by the orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you listened into Fred Allen's program last Wednesday night, I bring you a man who needs no further introduction, Jack Benny. Thank you. <laughs> Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, I gather from that little announcement of yours that Allen was throwing verbal darts at my bullseye again. Is that it? Yes, Jack. Didn't you hear him? No, my radio was on, but unfortunately, I was eating celery at the time. <laughs> the loud kind from Utah. <laughs> Tell me, uh, was Alan as witty as ever, or was he better? Well, Jack, I have to admit, he did get a lot of laughs at your expense. Oh, he did? Well, I won't have to worry about him long. Uh, television will soon be here, and he'll either have to have his face lifted, or get in a barrel and broadcast through a bunghole. <laughs> Now, wait a minute, Jack. Alan may not be handsome, but when you come right down to it, he isn't so bad looking. He isn't. Don, he's the only Irishman I ever saw that could eat in a Chinese restaurant and be mistaken for a waiter. <laughs> if he wasn't allergic to soap and water, he could open a laundry. <laughs> now, let's drop the subject of Mr. Allen. Oh, by the way, Don, I noticed you were limping when you came into the studio just now. <laughs> Did you have an accident of some kind? Huh? Well, uh, uh... Come on, Don, tell us. Well, let me see. Oh, yes, I was out riding this morning and my horse threw me. Oh, threw you? Mm. Don, there's a possibility that you could have fallen off a horse. But the horse that can throw you doesn't live. <laughs> tell me, Fibber McWilson, uh, how did this... How did this unfortunate accident happen? Well, Jack, it was like this. I was cantering through the park Oh, this sure, morning. sure. Just stop, Don. Folks, I got to tell you what really happened to Wilson. We were in a drugstore just before our... Now, program. Jack! Anyway, Don stepped out of the weighing machine, and right now it's getting pennies in heaven. <laughs> Boy, what a wreck. Jack, I wish you hadn't said that. Now people will get the idea that I'm really fat. Fat? Don, when you step into your shoes, your rubber heels spread out like pancake batter. <laughs> I can't understand how a guy can gain so much weight on the salaries I pay. You're not kidding. <laughs> you know, Don, every time I look at you... <laughs> hmm. That woman would have to bring Cuddles to the broadcast. Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. How's the boy? 
Jackson? Phil, every time I meet you lately, you call me Jackson. What's the big idea? Well, that's as close as I can get to jackass and still be polite. Aha, <laughs> 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 uh -huh, that's very funny. You know, Phil, you're clever enough to have your own program, which you better start looking for. <laughs> Ah, oh, no, Jack, I couldn't let you down. You need a guy like me around here. Oh, I do? Sure, after all, I'm the only sex appeal on the show. Is that so? Phil, did you by any chance hear me on the Screen Actors Guild program last week in that romantic bit with Joan Crawford? Oh, was that you? I thought it was Guy Kibbe. <laughs> you knew darn well it was me. I got that smart wire you sent me. I didn't send you any wire. Not much. Who else would send me a ten-word telegram with seven lousies in it? <laughs> and another thing, Phil, the next time you send a wire from Pomona, don't sign it George Bernard Shaw. He moved from there. <laughs> you know, Harris, you remind me of a guy... Of a guy... Madam, madam, must your, must your dog bark when I'm talking? You don't expect him to laugh, do you? <laughs> no, but he can wipe that sneer off his face. Now, keep him quiet, please. Let's see, what was I talking about? I don't know. I just came in. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello. Say, Mary, Jack was just telling us about the program he did with Joan Crawford last week. Were you there? I'll say I was. And boy, was Jack nervous. I wasn't nervous at all. Naturally, I was a little keyed up working with Miss Crawford, but I was not nervous. You weren't? No. Do you always sit down on chairs when they're not there? <laughs> oh, I just did that for a laugh, that's all. Everything went along fine. <laughs> Did you tell the boys what happened at rehearsal, Jack? What was it, Mary? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were just about to finish their big scene, and Jack was supposed to kiss Miss Crawford. Yes? Well, Jack grabbed Joan in his arms and bent her over backwards. Yes? <laughs> then he bent her over a little further. Uh-huh. Now, Mary. <laughs> then a little more. <laughs> and what happened? Jack's toupee fell right in her face, and she fainted. <laughs> Now, Mary, that wasn't my toupee at all. That was my beanie. Well, well, it had a part in it. Mary, that only happened at rehearsal, but the routine sounded all right over the air, believe me. Not according to Fred Allen Wednesday night. Say, what is Allen anyway, a barometer or something? If he doesn't learn to keep his mouth shut, I'm going to do something about it. I wouldn't get tough with him, Jack. You know, Allen's a pretty athletic guy. Athletic? Sure, I saw a picture of him in a fan magazine the other day, and he was posing in tights and boxing gloves. Yeah, but the hair on his chest said, welcome on it. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of that picture, fellas, did you notice his legs? They look like two sleepy people. <laughs> Imagine Alan posing as a fighter. Huh. One of these days, I'm going to have my picture taken being shot out of a cannon. <laughs> and in a leopard skin. I'll show him. All right, champ, relax. Take it easy. Lead me to him. <laughs> I'll, I'll get in the ring with Alan any day. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You wouldn't get in the ring with Ferdinand the Bull. That was very cute, Mary. When Phil has his own program, you're going to be a big help to him. We've got... <laughs> Yeah. We've got the first show all written. Oh, I see. And what are you going to call your little comedy act? Mary and Phil. Corn as you like it. <laughs> well, you certainly got the right title. Say, where's Kenny? It's time for him to do a song. Here I am, Jack. Oh, where were you, Kenny? I was over in the corner counting my toes. <laughs> counting your toes? Yeah. I count and I count and I still get 22. Kenny, either your arithmetic is bad or Ripley is waiting for you. <laughs> and next time, don't come in here with such a silly routine at all. Well, I was just trying it out for Phil's new show. Listen, Kenny, I just said that a while ago when I was mad. Phil isn't going to have his own show. He is, too. He offered me $8,000 in car fare. Oh. <laughs> He's very generous, isn't he? $8,000 a week, huh? Not only that, I get extra money for writing the program. Oh, you're going to write the show, too. Well, that ought to be worth listening to you. Yeah, not only that... Oh, quiet! Either... Now, go ahead with your song. Wait a minute. Say, hey, Phil, is it all right if I sing on this program? Sure, kid, but hold back a little. Now, yeah. cut out this foolish! <laughs> now, you get up that microphone, young man, and sing. All right. <laughs> oh, shut up! Sing, Cuddles. I mean, Kenny. <laughs> A dreamer, for 
I was born that way. And I was born to love you, keep dreaming of you each day. Then as the evening shadows fall, you seem to be so near. I only have to close my eyes and I can see you, my dear. I dim all the lights and I sink in my chair The smoke from my cigarette climbs through the air The walls of my room fade away in the blue And I'm deep in a dream of you The smoke makes a stairway for you to descend You come to my arms, may this bliss never end For we love anew just as we used to do when I'm deep in a dream of you Then from the ceiling Sweet music comes stealing We glide to a lover's refrain You're so appealing That I'm soon revealing My love for you all again My cigarette burns you I wake with a start my hand isn't hurt, but there's pain in my heart. Awake or asleep, every memory I feel deep in a dream of you. Deep in a Dream, sung by Kenny Baker. And Kenny, that's one of the best songs you've sung this year. I know you put so much feeling into it. Really, it was thrilling. Oh, you're just trying to flatter me, so I'll stay with your program. Flatter you? I can see through that, brother. <laughs> Kenny, for three years now, I've been raving about your voice, and all of a sudden, it's flattery. You ungrateful little brat. Now, wait a minute, you. Don't aggravate my tanner. Phil, I refuse to continue this discussion about your imaginary program. However, if you happen, do happen to get one, I'd only be too glad to let you have Kenny and Mary. Be sure to take those broken-down troubadours with you. Ah, <laughs> oh, no, I'm sending them to Paul Whiteman. Well, don't send them COD or they'll return with the swallows. <laughs> anyway, Phil, as far as I'm concerned, you and Kenny and Mary can all go. Just leave me good old Don Wilson and I'm satisfied. Well, you should be. You're still getting more than half. Well, let me ask you something, Mary. Suppose you did go with Phil. Who's going to give you those good, snappy jokes? You mean like that last one? <laughs> yeah, don't be cute. Who's going to write your material? Oh, we've got two swell writers. Oh, yeah? Who are they? Noel Coward and Maxie Rosenblum. <laughs> it's a fine combination. Of course, I don't know what I'm getting myself all worked up for. It's all so silly. Well, don't worry, Jack. No matter what happens, I won't leave you. I'll stick with you and Jello from Strawberry to Lime. I had a boy, Don. And I regret that I have but one life to give to my sponsor. Thanks, John. You're a real pill. Pal. <laughs> Maybe that'll teach these traders here something about loyalty. Well, gee whiz, Jack, we're not the only ones. I heard you on a program with Joan Crawford last week. Well, that was a special broadcast, Kenny, for one appearance only. Say, how'd you like it? Oh, it was swell. Say, Jack, I was wondering, is Joan Crawford as beautiful as she looks? <laughs> well, of course she's beautiful, and she's marvelous to work with. Gee, I got so excited listening to the broadcast. Did you really kiss her? Why, <laughs> Why, certainly I did. Who held her? <laughs> Phil, don't be so flippant. Miss Crawford enjoyed working me with me very much. She told me so. And as a little memento of the broadcast, I sent her a lovely bottle of perfume. Well. In fact, I sent Rochester over to her house with it this morning. You were on the air with her a week ago. Why did you wait till today to send her perfume? Rochester was making it. <laughs> Did nothing of the kind. I sent Joan some real imported stuff. It's called uh, La Lune Bleue de Beauf de l'Amour. 
What does that mean? Love at twilight also removes stains. <laughs> How do you know, Mary? Do you speak French? Woo, oui, woo, oui, monsieur. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're all wrong. It's exquisite perfume, and I'm sure Miss Crawford will like it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if I may interrupt my cast, I would like to announce our play for next week. As a special treat, we are going to offer our version of the Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> now, I will play the part... Uh, pardon me, folks. Hello? Hello again, this is Rochester talking. I know who it is. What do you want? Say, boss, I don't think I'm going to be able to pick you up after the broadcast. Your car's on the boom. What's wrong with it? Well, for one thing, the back tires are flatter than Mr. Wilson's rubber heel. Well, for heaven's sakes, get busy. Can't you blow up the tires? The pump ain't no good since you made those cream puffs with it. <laughs> oh, that's right. Well, gee whiz, how am I going to get home? Why don't you take a taxi? I'll split it with you. <laughs> Well, that's very kind of you, but I'll manage somehow. See you later. So long, boy. So long. Oh, Rochester, uh, did you take that perfume over to Miss Crawford? Yes, sir, in person. That's good. Did she open it? No, she just took a slow look at the price tag and then a quick one. Why, darn you, Rochester, I told you to take the price tag off the bottle. Well, don't worry, boss, I raised it. <laughs> raised it? I put a one in front. It's twelve fifty now. <laughs> Well, I gotta hand it to you, Rochester. That was quick thinking. Yeah, but maybe I shouldn't have done it in front of her. <laughs> maybe you shouldn't. I don't know why I ever trust you to do anything. You show absolutely no judgment or foresight. I'm a butler, not a swami. <laughs> All right, forget it. Next time I'll know better. So long, boy. So long. By the way, Rochester, just a minute. I just thought of something. If the car is out of commission and you can't pick me up tonight... How did you get over to Miss Crawford's house with that perfume? I'll think of something before you get home. Goodbye. <laughs> hmm. He better think of something. What's the matter, Jack? Listen, Phil, you'll not only have your own program, but you might also have a very good end man. Play, boys. You know, the highest compliment your guests can pay you is to ask for a second helping. Well, here's the dish that's guaranteed to bring them back for more. It's the new Jell-O butterscotch pudding, and let me tell you right now, it's one of the grandest desserts you ever dipped a spoon in. It's mellow and creamy smooth. It has a grand tempting color like rich golden taffy, and what a flavor. That good old-fashioned butterscotch flavor that you used to love when you were a youngster. And here it is in the new Jell-O butterscotch pudding. So grand, you just have to taste it to appreciate it. Then try Jell-O chocolate pudding, rich and smooth and real chocolatey. And a Jell-O vanilla pudding with a delicate creamy flavor that's delicious. All three Jell-O puddings are quick and easy to prepare with only a few moments cooking. You'll find the simple directions on every package, and the best way is to buy three packages at a time. So ask your grocer tomorrow for Jell-O butterscotch, chocolate, and vanilla pudding. The real homemade kind. We're a little late, so good night, folks. This is the National Broadcasting Company.